Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As a Windermere hawk, I promise to practice the Windermere way. I am respectful, responsible, and ready to learn. Hey, kindergartners! Wednesday. Good morning. I love technology. Technology makes everything from gaming to even learning just one click away. But technology doesn't always come with zero price. In fact, sometimes technology comes with some things that aren't so nice. Have you ever noticed that sometimes someone's online self isn't as nice as their face-to-face -face self? That is a very common problem, not just at Windermere, but everywhere. Even grown-ups act a different way when they go online. So my challenge to you is to make sure that your online self is every bit as good and as friendly as your face-to-face -face self. Now, technology is also a tool. Your iPad is a tool. In fact, a very powerful tool. Let's think of it as your online chainsaw. And just like a chainsaw has very important safety rules, your iPad does too. Remember, the iPad is given to you with the expectation that you're going to use it well. So follow these very simple rules. Rule number one, don't say anything mean or hurtful through text. Even if you think it's just a joke, it can come across as extremely mean and hurt people's feelings. If you wouldn't say it face to face, then we won't say it online. Second, do not share your password. Even if they're your best friend, we keep those passwords private. And finally, and this is the hardest one, when we're using our iPad and we're doing schoolwork, don't get tempted with going online and searching up YouTube or playing a game. Stick to the task at hand. Now, there will be plenty of time for having fun or um, watching something amusing. But when you're in class, stick to the task. Until next time, this is Officer Don signing off. Have a great day. We, the digital citizens, with our hands up in the air, pledge to travel safely when we click from here to there. If you want to see the world, you don't always need a plane, a giant yellow school bus, or a noisy train. You just need the internet and something with the screen to see a different country or a pretty ocean scene. If you've ever seen a sloth or a pick of baby Sue, just go online and check them out. Remember what to do. Always ask a grown-up before you go online. Uh -huh. It's good to set a limit and keep track of your time. That's right. Keep your info private like your name and your address. Right. And always find a grown-up if you're scared or you're stressed. If you want to see the world, you don't always need a plane, a giant yellow school bus, or a noisy train. You just need the internet and something with the screen to play an awesome puzzle game or watch a soccer team. So go online and check them out. Remember what to do, to do, to do, to do. Always pause and think when visiting a site. Mm -hmm. Only talk to friends you know and never start a fight. Okay. It's fun to have a screen to laugh and play with friends. But if it's nice, go outside and find the rainbow's end. If you want to see the world, you don't always need a plane. A giant yellow school bus or a noisy train. You just need the internet and something with the screen. To be a part of something great, whatever you can dream. Remember that you took this pledge to be your best online. So stick with the Dig Citizens. And together, 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 you will shine. Welcome back, road trippers. Our journey today is going to be all about kids. 
kids who are using their passion and perseverance to change the world. Before we take off, meet Marley. My name is Marley Dias. I am an author and an activist. So when I was 10 years old, I was a very avid reader, and in my fifth grade class, I didn't see black girls as the main characters in any of the books that we were assigned. When we actually got into the classroom. The books were just mainly about white boys and dogs. So I've aimed to collect 1,000 books where black girls were the main characters, and now over the past four years, I've collected 12,000 books where black girls are the main characters and written my own book, which is called Marley Dias Gets It Done, and So Can You. And it's essentially about how kids can use their passions and things they care about to create change in the world. One trailblazer that's really inspired me and kind of pushed me to be great is Augusta Baker. She is an unsung hero, really, of the literary world. She worked in the New York Public Library for 37 years, and she did a lot of work on diversity and inclusion. And even though I wasn't alive when she was alive, I know that I follow in her footsteps. The work that she's done really created a way, especially um, on the East, for kids and for adults, especially black adults and black kids, to care about diversity. It's kind of amazing to think that I never knew who she was when I started my campaign, and obviously she never got the chance to meet me or hear about me when she passed away in 1998, but it's like the fact that our work is so closely aligned that I can see I use her history and her example um, and shine in her light and figure out what I'm going to do with my campaign next. So it's really inspiring, especially when she started her work in like the early 1940s, that she was living in a segregated world where so many people didn't care um, about the narratives of black people, and she really had to be both smart, strong, and brave, which are things that I try to be with the work that I do. She went about the work that she did in a very respectful way where she wanted to make sure that the kids that were reading these books weren't pushing out the stories of white people, weren't pushing out the stories of the majority. And I try to use that lesson of letting people know that I care about what white people have to say, I care about what black people have to say, I care about what um, Pacific Islander, Asian, Latina, people with different abilities have to say. And the campaign is about creating a space for all rather than pushing one group out and letting other groups in. I try to apply um, Baker's work into mine by making sure that I allow for kids to know that their voices matter too and encouraging them that the power of reading really allows for them to become change makers and to become people that adults care about and want to listen to so we can become the next generation of people that change the world. Our one stop today is in Birmingham, Alabama. Many change makers lived in Alabama, including a group of children who decided to march to end segregation. They took matters into their own hands when their parents were afraid of being arrested and losing their jobs for protesting against unfair laws. Like Audrey Frey Hendricks, who on that day as a nine-year-old was the youngest marcher, she spent seven days in jail with other children for simply marching to protest inequality. To find out about the historical and harrowing event that took place at the 16th Street Baptist Church on September 15, 1963, you'll want to read Watson's Go to Birmingham. This shook Birmingham to its core and changed the lives of these girls' families forever. Spend some time this week exploring many of the great books we have about children and their fight for civil rights. Grades 3 through 5 can search and discover, and K2 can find these books on the Hawkinator this week and next. Tomorrow, we will learn about some unsung heroes of the civil rights movement as we continue on our road trip with the Hemmelgarns.